Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. Richard Torres is on his way. You guys don't know who Richard Torres is? Just go on out to the Instagram and type in his name. Or go to YouTube, type in Richard Torres, T-O-R-R-E-Z, and look at his highlights. This man has already fought four times since March of 2022. That means since March of this year. He's already fought four times. And when I tell you Richard Torres is a monster, he is a monster fighting in the heavyweight division. He stands about 6'2", and weighs, comes in the ring between 200 and 215 pounds. So a little bit smaller for a heavyweight. I mean, uh, in, in regards to what we're used to seeing, and these monsters standing about 6'6", 6, 6'7", 6, 6, 6, weighing 250 plus pounds. <clears throat> But the thing about Richard Torres, you know, we have we have to uh, we have to understand you know his pedigree and his background, okay. But first and foremost, he fought four times this year already. That's unheard of, okay. A lot of these boxers, whether they're new uh, to the professional ranks or they're seasoned vets, right, they can learn a lot from him. Reminds me kind of like Mike Tyson when Mike Tyson first started. They just wanted to keep him going, keep him busy. You know, had him on a robust fighting schedule. And Richard Torres is being handled the same way. Now, it's no surprise that he's being handled this way because obviously, tend to think when a fighter turns pro to be fighting like this four times uh, since March in like a nine, nine month period, uh, actually like a seven month period. You know, that means there has to be someone there who has some kind of boxing knowledge. So to understand his grandfather was a professional boxer. His dad fought, uh, had a, uh, was very accomplished as an amateur boxer, his dad. So there's no wonder that he did so well as an amateur boxer, went on in 2020 to win a silver medal. Okay, so Richard Torres, is he has the pedigree. He has an expanded uh, boxing background, and he comes from a very sound boxing pedigree. So it's no wonder that he's on this robust fighting schedule since turning pro. And it's no wonder that he's demolishing people with his style. Now, for those of you who don't know who Richard Torres is, I'm going to make an assumption that at this point, if you're watching this channel, you're a boxing fan, and you know who Isaac Pitbull Cruz is. Okay? Pitbull Cruz, the guy who fought Tank Davis. Everybody say, a lot of people say he beat Tank and, you know, it is what it is. He's a guy who came and damn near killed Gamboa. Almost anyone Pitbull Cruz gets in the ring with, he damn near decapitates him. This guy, Richard Torres, very similar style. He comes in, he's stalking, he's cutting the ring off. He's a southpaw, though. He's got that uh, got that right hand uh, up high, and he's just kind of pawing with it, pawing with it, you know, just to distract you and to close the distance. And what, once he closes the distance... He explodes, and he gets guys out of there. He's got power. He's got the pedigree. He's got the awareness. He has everything you, uh, that you're looking for in a fighter. Um, and when you look at, you know, March 4th, July 15th, August 27th, then just, you know, the other day, October 29th, getting in the ring and fighting and knocking these guys out. First fight, uh, knocked the guy out in the second round. Second fight, first round knockout. Third fight, first round knockout. Then this weekend, knocked a guy out in the third round. So he's stepping up in competition, okay, because in his first fight, he fought a guy who was six wins, three losses. Second fight was two wins, one loss. Third fight was four wins, two losses. And his last fight, the guy was 13 wins, two losses, although I believe his uh, 13 wins were in his homeland, I believe it was Egypt. So we know we see 13 wins. I mean, that kind of is one of those things, you know, depending on their opponents and where they're fighting. But the bottom line is, he's uh, stepping up against his opposition. Uh, the guy he fought yesterday, he made an attempt. He just got overwhelmed. He did land one or two good shots early in the fight. But but Richard Torres is just someone who I personally think is going to be a problem for heavyweights. i tell you the fight to make right now that I can see that would be so intriguing is Richard Torres and Andy Ruiz. I think Andy Ruiz would have a tough time with him. 
Andy Ruiz has those fast hands. Torres will be right there to be hit. But Torres is explosive. You know, it's like watching him is almost like watching like a, I'm not going to say like Mike Tyson because Mike Tyson just had more skill. But I'm talking about as far as the compactness, you know, of a, of a heavyweight fighter. Um, oh, what's the name of that guy who fought a, a Vander Holyfield, man? Um, I can't remember his name. It's when Holyfield was a cruiserweight. Man was built like a spark plug. Had the braids in his hair. Um, he was giving Holyfield a business, but Holyfield came back. Can't remember his name, but he has that that kind of style. Very very compact. But once he gets in close, he's letting his hands go, and and he's gonna get you out of there. What's interesting about him is he was born in 1999, so he's a young guy. You know, he's not one of these guys who like you know 30, 32 years old. You know, who started boxing at 20, 20, 20, 23, 24. Some of the stuff we see with some of the uh, the heavyweights right now picking up boxing late late in life. No, this guy here has been boxing for a long time, man. Um, and the, the the thing about it, when you talk about his career as an amateur, you know he he was on all the circuits, both domestic and uh, uh, internationally, man. So he won a bronze medal at the 2019 Pan American Games, fighting at super heavyweight. Placed fifth at the 2019 AIBA World Boxing Championships in the same weight class. Then he won a silver medal at the 2020 Olympics and losing to a professional boxer named Bakodir Jalilov, uh, which would probably be a good fight with both of them as professionals now, kind of like what we saw with Clarissa Shields and, um, and Savannah Marshall, uh, seeing them turn pro and you know, uh, Clarissa Shields being able to avenge her loss as an amateur. And I think that would be a good fight for Torres, but put it to you this way, right? We're talking about Richard Torres right now, right? Who the hell is talking about Bak Bakodir Jalalov? Jalalalala. <laughs> Let me stop making fun of people's names. Nobody talking about no damn Jalalov. So that should tell you a lot about Richard Torres and um, his, the promoters and the, and the promise that he's showing as a professional boxer just based on his performance as an amateur. A couple other interesting facts about him is uh, at the Youth World Championships in 2016, fought net super heavyweight and won the, the U.S. Youth National Championships in 2014, 15 and 16 in Reno, Nevada. Fought at that one, same, same weight class, uh, super heavyweight. U.S. National Championships 2017, 2018 in Salt Lake, fought and won. Golden Gloves 2017, uh, Lafayette, Louisiana won that. Then the Olympics, you know, in 2020, were in the, the silver. So, you know, Torres Jr. represents the third generation of a boxing family from the San Joaquin Valley in California. His great-grandfather, Juan Torres, immigrated from Fresno, Mexico in 1920. His grandfather, Manuel Torres, was a Southwest USA Golden Gloves champion. And his father, and his father is his coach. Richard Torres Sr. reached the quarterfinals in the U.S. trials for the 1984 Olympics. So, again... Boxing pedigree, and it, it, it's no surprise that this guy, who made his professional boxing debut on March 4th of this year uh, by clipping uh, Alan Melson by KO in the second round, no surprise that from March 4th to here we are, you know, basically 1st of November, he's fought four times and should be fighting again before the end of the year. That'd be five times in like a nine month span. And going into uh, 2023, he's looking to keep his momentum going. I just wanted to bring him to you, to put him on your radar, okay? Just like I've been talking about those Dominican fighters, because a lot of people aren't paying them any attention right now. You know, those Dominican fighters are going to kill somebody. And the same thing with Richard Torres. He, if As he continues to improve with his style and his power, he need to get rid of that mustache, though. You know, that mustache got to go. But aside from that, he's going to hurt somebody. A lot of people say, oh, he's 6'2", you know, 205, 10 pounds. He's too small for the welterweight division. I'm not saying he floats like a butterfly and stings like a bee like Usyk. Usyk is the exception. He's an anomaly, okay? But Torres is showing that he's special too, okay? And don't know about the chin yet, kind of like what we said about Boots Ennis. Passing, passing, um, passing the eye test, gets an A+. Plus. What happens when things don't go his way? That's what I want to see, okay? What's going to happen when he has faced a little adversity? How's he going to respond, all right? And most of the fighters, especially right now, today, they've gone through some adversity, 
and they bounced back and they've shown uh, what they're made of, okay? And for Richard Torres and these other, this, this new generation of fighters that's coming up and looking to take over and kind of purge out these guys who've been around for a while, you know, at some point, as they start to bubble up in competition, we're going to find out what they're all made of. And uh, Richard Torres, as far as what I'm seeing, being a heavyweight with that kind of power and that aggressive style, he looks like he has a lot of promise, and I think he's going to make a lot of money. Um, the the thing about him, though, he doesn't speak Spanish. Uh, my understanding, if he spoke Spanish, that's just another advantage, you know, uh, as far as his crossover appeal and being able to relate to a lot of people, box, crazy boxing fans who, who are maybe bilingual or speak Spanish, but he doesn't speak Spanish, just you know, straight English. But that being said, that's my little two cents on Richard Torres. He's extremely powerful, extremely explosive. If you look at how he's built, his legs, his upper body, he's 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 extremely muscular. I'm not sure if he played any football or what, but to be built like that, it could be genetics, but it just makes me wonder if he did any kind of powerlifting or played football or something, man, uh, did a lot of sprinting. Because, you know, sprinting develops with different muscles in your legs opposed to long distance running. Uh, because he is built for tough and he looks strong. But anyway, more to come on Richard Torres. I'm excited to have him in the heavyweight division. Uh, I, I'm telling you, you may end up seeing him and that guy, big baby Jared Anderson, mixing it up uh, at some point. Before, I, I think we may see him and Jared Anderson fight before we see Jared Anderson fight uh, Adelian White or one of those guys because it seems like no one really wants to give uh, Jared Anderson an opportunity either. But that being said, Thanks for watching the video. Y'all keep cool. Hit a thousand subscribers. Going through that process right now. Once I can monetize, we'll monetize. And uh, we'll start having live streams. And I'll make a few tweaks to the channel. Any support you guys would offer, I appreciate it. But at the end of the day, y'all keep cool, keep safe. Shout out to the veterans, all seven continents. And as always, I'm in the breeze.